This is Donna Woods with Health Made Simple. And today, my very special guest is Florence Wetzel. And she is a professional fit fitter. So this, will, this is really designed for all of our horse people out there, and especially if you put a bit in a horse's mouth. Welcome, Florence. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yes. Florence and I met um, about a year and a half ago. So I have two saddlebreds. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the breed, they have really interesting mouths. And I've been into horses for 20 years, 25 years. And um, this was really the first time that, you know, we would put a bit in the horse's mouth and they just weren't happy. So we knew that they weren't happy, and we had tried a couple of different ones, um, but nothing made either one of my girls happy. And so we were referred to Florence, and she came out and did a professional bit fitting, and I was absolutely blown away. And literally, um, the one mare that she did a bit fitting on, like it completely transformed her entire posture, her attitude like the whole nine yards. And so I was super excited when she said that she would love to come on and chat with me and share some, some more information about bit fitting. Really fascinating to me was the part, like the how the tongue and how the mouth functions and all of that. So um, I, we're going to dive in with Florence today. Um, Florence. How did you how did you get into this? Actually, as um, uh, somebody who desperately needed to find a solution for a difficult horse, um, I had imported a very very expensive horse from France. When it got here, I quickly discovered that uh, after passaging everywhere for two months and not knowing how to get any other gate, um, that I was in real trouble. And that real trouble actually was a decade, 10 years that I struggled with this horse. I went through four custom saddles and you all know how much that costs. I had acupuncturists, acupressurists. I had vets, the best of the best. Um, I had a lot of Olympic people that I knew rode the horse and said, basically, good luck. Um, and so after filling the seven oceans or the seven seas with my tears, um, somebody just happened to say to me, you know, there's a company that has a bit that addresses what this horse did and what this horse did. He was sort of about 16 hands, a little short neck, short couple Dutch horse and should have been easy to put together. Um, but he got to uh, being like driving, uh, riding a pile driver. And um, he would uh, drop his back out and bring that very short, thick neck back to me. And then uh, there's no way I could put that horse together. So I went online and I did the research. I found the bit, but I wanted not to put any more, you know, I had spent literally tens of thousands of dollars. And to spend another $300, I just, I was a little jaundiced. And um, I didn't want to do that. And believe it or not, um, I couldn't find it to rent it, but I was in the local Home Depot one day and through the door came somebody through the door with this company's logo plastered all over them. I thought, oh boy, this is a sign. So I sort of followed her very closely. She said I stalked her, but I really didn't stalk her. I followed at a respectful distance, eventually introduced myself, told her what I was looking for. Um, she subsequently came out to look at the horse put this specific bit I was looking for in the horse's mouth. And for the first time in 10 years, I could ride the horse. He went down and round and was soft and his back was supple. And I thought, whoa, all the time, all the tears, all the professionals I had involved and no one said, oh, it's in, it has to do, it's in the bit. It, it has to do with the bit. And so I became so keenly interested that um, I then began to go over uh, to explore more 
with the, the president. The company was Neue Schule. And I, uh, I went over to uh, the president's house and started working with her and looking at the horses and reading and studying and studying and reading. And I did every course that they had in their academy. And um, then uh, actually went to the UK. Uh, I have taught for them. And it was sort of a neat meeting of my background, which is very science-based, my passion, which is horse-based. And I put it all together. So I was at the right place at the right time. So that's how I became a bit fitter. That is absolutely amazing. What is the biggest, like, what, like, what surprises, you've been doing this for quite a long time, but like, what surprises you the most when you go out to a farm and you're, you're bit fitting horses, what surprises you the most of that maybe very well educated people that have been in horses for a very long time don't, like, they don't know. You know, I'm always surprised. I, I was uh, doing a clinic this past weekend, and here their dentist, who was a veterinarian, had instructed everybody to put their bits on upside down. I've been doing the job seven years, and that's the first time I've heard that. And bits are only made to work in one specific manner. So I think the categorically, um, regardless of whether it's a professional or an amateur or a veterinarian or a body worker, or whomever, people have very little insight to how bits actually function. And the function of a bit has, it has a mechanical application which has to do with working angles and how a horse seeks to balance itself. And that is not only based upon the anatomical structures of the horse, but how the horse is muscled, how the horse has been trained. And then you add to that or you complicate that with what the rider is doing up there. Right. So, so you've got to put all that together. So, um, you know, it always surprises me just overall the lack of understanding of how bits work. We all know we need them. We try, sometimes people try not to need them by going in a hackamore or whatever, uh, or a bitless bridle. And inevitably, you know, it turns out to like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I think the astute trainers will say, I can tell you if a bit works or doesn't, if a horse likes it or not, but I have no clue how it works. Right. And, and that was exactly, you know, our situation, like, you know, our, our background and experience is we're trail riding. We're just, you know, we've just started in the past year and a half, two years doing dressage or getting into that arena. And, um, and so I'm like, there's, there's like, you know, like there's actually, you know, our, our education on it was, oh, well, a bit is designed so you can stop your horse. That was it. Yep. That was it. And so when you came over, I was just blown away by all of the information that you provided. And so can you go into a little bit more detail on what is that? Like, I, I, and, I, and we also know that a bit is also for communication. Like, Correct. But Correct. Can, you, can you explain more? You had talked about like the palate of the mouth and the right. tongue and things like that. Can you go into a little bit more detail? Sure. So one of the things I do as a bit fitter is I look at the inside and the outside of every horse's mouth. So I'm looking for what kind of palate do they have? Now, people say, oh, my horse has a flat palate, but they may be looking at a lifetime, maybe 10 horses. I look at about a thousand horses a year. Right. So I'm looking at a thousand palates. So I can say really, whether it's a flat palate, a dentist, you know, they have quite a few horses they're looking, they can say it's a flat palate, it's an average palate. I can look to see if a horse has a fat, thick tongue or long, thin tongue. I can look if a horse has canine teeth, I can look at the space between the top canine and the bottom canine and how much space I have between those canines and the first premolars. Uh, I can look at, and I, and I am always surprised, um, you know, I'll look at a horse's mouth and I'll say, when was the dental done? And, you know, people sometimes, they can tell me specifically, or sometimes they'll say, well, he's due. Now, what does that mean? Well, he was due 12 months ago or six months ago. Right. Um, so, um, 
you know, I'm looking for the shape of the bars. And, and, and I, I want to address this very quickly. A lot of people will say, well, my trainer says the bit's on the bars. Well, that is possible, but probably not, not likely. And I'll tell you why, because the tongue's job is always be, the tongue's job is to make a place for the bit. And the tongue, unless displaced, is always between the bit and the bars. Right. But, but bits are designed to exert certain pressures. Some bits put more palate pressure. Some pits, bits put pressure on the margins of the tongue that cover the bars. Some bits put pressure only on the center of the tongue. Some bits put pressure on all those places. And horses like what they like, like your horses. We tried a number of bits. They right. liked what they liked because it spoke to where their balance points are, where they like pressure. And um, so I look at all those things. I look at, do I have a long smile? Do I have a short smile? That will determine the thickness of the bit. Do I use a 12, a 14, a 16 millimeter? Sometimes people are under the mistaken impression that thin bits are harsh bit. Not necessarily. All right. You could have um, a long, thin foot that's like a size nine. And I ask you to take your long, thin foot and put it in a size six sneaker. Well, that's not going to be very comfortable. Correct. Right. Or I could have a short fat foot and put it in a size 11 sneaker. And that's not going to be very comfortable either. So right. bits are the same way. You have to have the thickness of the bit it has to match the room that you have to work with. And the other thing is, um, is size of the bit from side to side. Right. About 70% of those nearly thousand people I do a year have bits that are the wrong size. And if there is uh, an inclination, it is to have bits that are too big. People think I always need to have a thumbs width on either side. But what's happening is that bit is going side to side to side to side to side. And because they're only made to work in a rather narrow range, when they are too big, the center portion, the center feature, which is meant to be in the center, ends up being over here. So you have pressures that are not designed, pressures that are developed that are that the bit is not designed to influence, but they're there because the bit is not the right size. And then, you know, then it's further exacerbated by not having the proper bridle. But it, it, it's a, a whole myriad of things that all converge into one time that either complete the picture or then disrupt the picture. So that that's... That's the whole thing about bit fitting. That's the, the whole thing. We're all done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, that, it, you know, it's, fit is important. Um, fit to function is important. How I bit for, um, and any one horse, how I bit for a professional is going to be different than how I bit for an amateur. How uh, uh, Totally different because yeah. timing's different. Feel is different. Anticipation is different. Their balance is different. And, um, you know, people will say to me, well, how long should I expect to have this bit? I mean, is it likely that a horse will have one bit their entire life? No, no, you can get, you can go along for many years, but it all depends on where the horse is at the time we do that bit fitting and are, how are they being developed? What is the purpose? One of the, my first questions is I'll say, well, what's the plan? Tell me what the plan is the next three months. What's the plan? Six months. So that is going to give me some insight into, um, you know, the the physical development of the horse, the understanding of the horse, um, you know, uh, the balance of the horse. And all those things will play into my decision on where we start at with our bit fitting before we even get into the horse liking or not liking what we we choose. Right. That, you know, that's so interesting. I'm going to back up a little bit and talk about the bit being too wide and, mm -hmm. and inadvertently going off because, you know, just thinking about even not even riding, you know, just riding, like, just like that can throw off the entire body of the horse. And, yes. if, it, and if a horse is in, in training 
um, you know, and doing dressage or doing any other form of competition or, you know, where there's muscle, you know, we're developing muscle and we're developing posture and we're developing self-carriage, that could be absolutely, that could actually make you go backwards. Correct. And you don't even know it. Or at some point in time, do you find that you'll deal with a horses with that develop like a, just a big, huge resistance to it? Oh, absolutely. 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 I mean, people are well-intended. And sometimes something will happen and people will choose a bit because um, they're not quite getting where they want to be. And so perhaps they, there's a, a great tendency to overbit a horse. And sometimes less is more. You know, one of the very, very first things that most people say to me is, my horse is very sensitive. Everybody says that. Well, that's why, that's why All your horses horse. are sensitive. All horses are sensitive. But, you know, um, they, are, they are sensitive to so, to so many things. And, um, w- you know, with, with the bits, it, if we don't have them properly sized and on a bridle that works for us. And I, I, at first I, I did a lot of bit fitting and I didn't really pay attention to the bridle. And then I got to looking at, I know the bridles, I know the bit's the right size. Right. But when the person was going around, I could still see half the bit. And, you know, and I'd look and watch and watch, and it happened on both sides. And it's not a phenomenon. I had to figure it out. Well, here, the bridle, you know, a lot of people buy, buy a bridle based on how it looks, not how it functions. And the bridles were allowing those bits to slip. Ah, from side to side. And so the best bit fitter in the world can't, can't make that not be an influence. You know, I can maybe put it in a fixed cheek. I can put it in a D or a full cheek or an egg butt and, and stop that a little bit. Right. But, you know, most people like to go, a lot of people like to go in, in loose rings and that loose ring just pulls through. So um, you know, it, it's it's teaching people um, the how important the the width of the bit is from side to side and yep. the thickness, and then we get into the cheek pieces and the cheeks. Um, you know, people say, "Well, I only like to ride in loose rings," and then they bring me a three year old or four year old or maybe a, I'll do a lot of first bits and. Um, they need help with lateral balance. So the bits can help with lateral balance if we use fixed cheeks like these or E's or, or full cheeks. They are pathways for sensory input. And they help the horse balance itself side to side. And so if I can help the horse, help the rider, because, you know, as amateurs, we get riding along, we think, well, this feels really nice. And the next thing you know, we've gone, you know, seven or eight steps. The next thing you know, the, the horse is on his forehand and the legs are back in the next county and it's all falling apart. And then we struggle and we're pulling and we're, we're seesawing back and forth and we're doing all this stuff. But it's, it's because, you know, we, we need to, uh, I need to help the horse help the rider, the rider help the horse by choosing where they need sensory input. And there are even some bits today that help with longitudinal balance. And the, the, the bits with longitudinal balance paired with a fixed cheek is sort of like the perfect combination to help horses laterally so they stay straight and longitudinally so they stay, you know, their rear wheel drive. Horses are rear wheel drive. Yes. Okay. About a large percentage. I don't know what percentage are pulling themselves along and they drop their backs out, which is not good for them. It's, 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 you know, good for everybody else who has to take care of those backs. Right. But we need to help horses keep their shoulders up to keep their rear ends tucked, to keep the legs underneath them so that they are more balanced. They are more comfortable. Yes. And you know, that, and when we do that and getting back to your original uh, question about, 
you know, harshness. If, if we make the horse feel confident and balanced, then the horse can close its mouth and then you have communication. Then the horse can pay attention to what you're asking. And again, less is more. More oftentimes results in exaggerated behaviors, exaggerated mouth problems, because we choose bits, although we think, you know, whatever people think that it's going to solve the problem because we're going to, we're going to make that happen. We end up really sabotaging ourselves and right. sabotaging our training and sabotaging our trainer and sabotaging everything because they can only communicate in one way. So then they yank the reins out of our hands. They start tossing their head. They start opening their mouth. They start putting their tongue out. They start falling sideways. They start being so silly. Right. That's how they can communicate. Like, this is not comfortable for me. Right. Horses like to be balanced. They like to be comfortable. And they like us not to fuss. That's probably the biggest one, right? Like, they like yes. us not to fuss. No fussing. No if fussing. We, if we can make them balanced and make them comfortable and yep. us not fuss, then they can listen to us. Because most horses want to please. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Ab ab absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it's interesting um, because not many people, like you said, your original story, how many saddles, you know, so we oh, went yeah. through, you know, we went through a very similar situation. You know, I had, you know, the saddle fit. I had a couple saddle fitters out. I bought a new saddle and, you know, mm -hmm. it helped, but it didn't take away the problem. Right. And, and you know, and we knew it wasn't necessarily the training because, mm -hmm. you know, my trainer's very soft and she's yeah. very in tune with, with, you know, with the horse and going, it, something's not right. Like she listened really well to the horses and, you know, and I, I could see it as well too. So it's just so interesting because nobody is talking about, or not many people, I should say, are talking about how integral the the bid is to yep. the whole, like, it's not, oh, let's just go pick a bit out from the used tax store for 30 bucks and throw it in its mouth. And I think right. it'd be fine. Or this is the one. So we have a, we have a pretty diverse herd. And so we actually started out in gated horses. Oh. Um, so, you know, we've had yes. Tennessee walkers, we've had Pasifinos. I've got the saddlebreds right now. Uh, there's a couple Andalusians in there. Oh. You know, we've got yeah. a range, but you know, people would say to us, Oh, do you have a do you have a walking horse fit in there on my walking horses? And I'm like, No. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. No. And it didn't make sense to me, but it but I'm a very intuitive person. So like mm -hmm. from a feeling perspective, I was like, no, and it doesn't feel right to do that, but I wasn't exactly sure why. Yes. So, could you talk about like when people are there different categories for different breeds or is that really just kind of a marketing thing? It's just really a marketing thing. I mean, again, it's how a bit functions, you know, and determined regardless of the breed. I mean, I went to Mexico city and did, a bunch of Lusitan of stallions, which is very different than being, you know, in Ocala and doing a bunch of Dutch dressage horses or doing a bunch of Morgans or going to an eventing barn and doing a bunch of thoroughbreds that are, that are doing, you know, the, sure. the whole thing I've done Mustangs, uh, you know, yeah. And, and still been able to use, although a variety of different styles of bits, but nothing I would say, oh, I'm only going to bring these for the dressage horses or I'm only going to bring these for the thoroughbreds. Because, right. you know, another big uh, thing is people think, oh, I have a big horse. He must wear a size six bit. Right. Oh, I have two horses. One's 16.3, one's over 17 hand, and they have five inch mouths. Right. And then I've had little PREs that are 15.2 that wear a six inch bit. Right. So. You know, but yet I've had Lusitanos that wear four and three quarters. It it all differs. 
It's yeah. really individual. It's like dealing with an individual person. Yes, we can go to the shoe store and you may wear size eight and a half and I wear size eight and a half. Right. But what's on top of that eight and a half is very different. You right. know? So right. and, and structure, thing. right? You know, yes. I know I've got long little I've got long narrow size nines. And so most people, you know, like I typically wear a narrow. Yes. And that's pretty unusual to have a size nine foot that's narrow, but yeah. Yeah. Everybody so, so fits different. it the same way. Exactly. It's, it's just making sure that you have the right size. And then, you know, then you get into purpose. So, you know, I might uh, I do a lot of eventers from, you know, very beginning all the way through international. And if I find a mouthpiece that the horse likes, then what I do is I just change the cheek style to match the face. So I'll use a like a loose ring or an egg butt or a D for dressage. I might use a jumper style, same mouthpiece, because the horse likes that mouthpiece. It balances them. But I've got to give the rider a little different tool because the questions being asked of the horse are very different. And then we get to cross country, same mouthpiece, maybe a little different style. So that, you know, when that horse is out there having a grand time and right. you're facing a big obstacle, I want my horse and riders to be safe. So I have to give them the right tools to be able to put the horse in the right place to have the right solution to the question being asked. Correct. The way that I sort of, um, so Brian and I used to teach dance. Um, mm -hmm. we, were, we were professional dance instructors for a long time. And so the way that I kind of feel like the bit should fit is, I don't want to say contact, but like, you know, like in dancing, you know, Brian would be very yeah. much about where where is the connection? To me, it's like a connection point and if he was loose in his connection and maybe only was putting his hand on my back and using three fingers, that feels differently than him putting the whole hand yeah. on the back and saying, mm -hmm. hey, I want to guide you over here, or I'd yes. like to guide you over here. Yes. And it makes a huge difference, you know, and I've danced with thousands of people and, and that, you know, so that, and everybody's connection is different, but like yes. the, the best dancers in the world have this amazing, uh, the best leaders, I should say, have this, uh, this connection that it makes the follower feel really comfortable mm -hmm. and they can pretty much ask them to go anywhere and do anything. And it's just super easy. And so even, and so I kind of sort of equate the proper bit to that like yes. it, it's not meant to be this big sloppy piece of metal in the mouth okay. that's bouncing all over the place right we're afraid to hurt our horse's mouth right you know it, it's meant to fit the right way right you know, a really great pair of shoes <laughs> you know i can I, um, people say i always say because uh, i do a lot of virtual fittings because i cannot be everywhere um, send me some photos of the horse's head. Uh, I asked for specific photos. Send me a photo of the bridle with the bit without the horse. And then send me some video. And I'll look at the bit and I'll say, your horse is doing this, 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 and this. Right. And then they say, well, yeah, because that bit is making the horse do whatever, you know, maybe it's a bit that's designed to have the horse go forward and downward into the hand. So the horse, get, that particular horse that they're using it on may get very heavy and on the forehand. And I'll say, oh, I bet you your horse is snuffling for truffles and very heavy on the forehand and you can't lift up the withers. And they'll say, well, yeah. I said, what's well, the wrong bit? That bit is designed for a horse whose um, first go-to is to go above the contact. Who wants to go out and up here. Oh, so we yeah. put Right. Yeah, so we put that bit on to, to encourage that horse to go forward and downward and seek our contact. Right. So, you know, that horse, that's, that doesn't speak to him. So we use a bit designed for what the horse is. And I'll say, okay, tell me what the go-to is. When the going gets tough, what's that horse going to go to? Because then, then you know, sort of all goes out the window and they're in survival mode. That doesn't mean they're running away with you or whatever. Right. But at that point, it's like, la, 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 la. I can't right. you. Correct. And, it's just like, hey, okay, whatever I got to do to get 
this done and over with. Exactly. And exactly. it may, and it may not, you know, most of the time I think it's not like big giant explosions, but it's more subtle stuff. It's yes. you know, not yeah. responding to, you know, your right seat bone or right. something it like can. that. They can't. And, and they and they can't, and then we get frustrated with them, and then you know, and then it sort of snowballs. And we've talked about yeah. that before. What is your what is your best tip for everybody watching? Hmm. Like if you had if you had to send them out to the barn, because I'm sure we've yeah. you've, you've you've provided lots of information. So mm -hmm. I know that everybody's going to go out to the barn or next time they go out to the barn and they go put the bride along with the bid in, they're going to be going, Hmm, now what should I really be looking okay, at? Okay. So about 50% of the bridles I encounter, the bits are on upside down. So to make sure your bit is right side up. And how do you know that? Okay. How do you know well, that the bit is right side up? Some manufacturers do put a triangle on the left side of the bit. There's a, a little triangle and it's always always goes on the left side, always points forward towards the nose. So that's one way. Awesome. The second thing is, is most manufacturers will stamp or imprint the cannons. That's the actual mouthpiece, the cannons of the bit. So as I'm putting the bridle on, I should be able to read whatever is stamped on the bit. Perhaps it's only the number five and a half, but the five and a half has to be able to be read. So it has to be right side up or it may say Agorian or Sensogram, or it could see, say Salox, or it could say whatever it says. Whatever but it says. It needs to be so that you can read it as you place it on the horse. That probably is one of the best things. And to, and to really look at it and say, does this really fit? When in doubt, when in doubt, go with your intuition okay. and say, this isn't, this, this doesn't feel right. Or I think, I have a, people say, I'll say, well, they come to the clinic and I'll say, well, how is the horse going? They say, this is okay. Okay. is not okay. Because right. we spend so much emotional energy. We spend so much physical energy. We spend so much effort. We spend so much of our financial uh, resources. Right. So, okay. is not okay. We should feel like we are doing really the best for our horse. Yeah. And therefore, we will be doing well for ourselves. Right. So when in doubt, ask the questions. Is this the right bit? Maybe I should call somebody and ask. You know, um, some people are afraid to ask. Yeah, well, and I, you know, I think it's, I think it's just lack of, uh, lack of education and lack mm -hmm. of awareness out there. I mean, I knew, um, you know, I had leased one of my horses out to a gentleman for the summer and he was doing he was doing a cow working clinic, and the instructor that was teaching the clinic, like, and she's a little Appaloosa, like he just looked at the horse and he went, she doesn't have the right bit in, and no explanation. And I think this person's super intuitive on this stuff, yeah. like he would never like really verbalize. Yeah. And so literally, they swap they swap the bit out, and all of a sudden, my little little poor my little Appaloosa turned into this cow pony and it, was, <laughs> and it was just amazing to see that she just went from being pretty like trail horse looking yeah. to having this rounded cow horse neck and it was and the guy was on a loose rein it's not like yeah. he was creating the frame right. it was just she was just like oh okay and she did amazing and uh, and so that was like I was yep. like Wow. So I knew that different bids did different things, but yeah. I just never, like, until I met you, I had never heard of a professional bit fitter. <laughs> so, uh -oh. I, so I was like, okay, and other than we'll come over and put different bits in their mouth and, you know, yeah. see, see if they like it or not, um, you know, that's part of it. But obviously, like you said, there's more of a scientific component to it. And oh, that's very much so. Yeah, that's the part that I absolutely love yeah. was that so. you come from that scientific background and you right. can explain and go because the function of this is this and, and whatnot. Right. right. And and like you said, like from a resource perspective, all of us are busy. We yes. all are, if we're into horses, 
we're busy. Yep. We have limited time. And the last thing that we want to do really is to be wasting all of our resources yep. chasing something mm-hmm. like you did for 10 years. I think I did yep. it for like a year and a half. Um, when it could be as simple as having a professional bit fitter come out right. and take a look or, you know, I know that you do bit fittings online. I do. Well, you chatted yep. about them. Um, and save so much, you know, so much time and yeah. so much effort so that we can actually enjoy our horses and yep. they can, and they can enjoy us. Exactly. When they, when they feel balanced and they're comfortable and we're not fussing, they really enjoy what they're doing. And we want them to be keen to do their jobs. We right. want them because we love our horses. You know, we, we want them to love when, when they see us pull up the barn or they come out of the house to the barn. We want, to, you know, everybody says, oh, my horse talks to me. You know, and that's like, that's very fulfilling. And they're excited to see you. It's like me seeing you, hey, how are you doing? You know, and I smile and, I, and because I'm happy to see you. We yeah. want that same thing with our horses, but if they have to think, oh my God, here she comes again. Oh. <laughs> and and they're dutiful. So they will be dutifully doing their job, but not very happy about it. Not very happy. You're right. Exactly right. You know, but people should look, even if they've had the dentist, to look in their horse's mouths. I mean, I've had people say, oh, my horse is horrible, horrible, horrible. And I open the mouth and here they got kicked in the field and fractured a molar. Or, right. you know, look, right. o- open that up, see, see what's in, especially if the horse is fairly compliant and all of a sudden mm, right. they're not happy. Something has changed. Correct. Something has changed. Correct. Yeah. I don't know that we fully realize how important the horse's m- mouth, the whole, I don't want to say neck, but the throat, the high yeah. leg, you know, yes. the guttural pouches, the esophagus, like AMJ, the, the TMJ, pole, all that. I mean, people yeah. have to think 80% of the horse's weight is in front of the saddle. There you go. <laughs> so there, what there are we go. doing with that? What are we doing with that? You know, right. yeah, and, and really that important. their head is like from a engineering perspective. It's a huge part of their balance. Absolutely. Head and neck. Head and neck and withers. How that's all connected. Yeah. Either we make it, allow them to to be able to do what they need to do. Right. To accomplish what we're asking them to do. Or we interfere with that. Right. And I'm not just talking a loose rein and letting them go. Right. No. We're talking about helping them. Right. Achieve what it is that it, the goal is the same. Correct. Um, exactly. Exactly. Florence, if people would like to uh, chat with you further about your bits or bit fitting, what is the best way that they can get in contact with you? Well, my email is Florence, F-L-O-R-E-N-C-E, at sign trymybits.com. So I, and I'm always, I am always on there. In fact, I always get hollered at because I'm a seven day a weeker, 24 hour a day type of person because you it's just me and I love what I do and I'm very blessed to be able to do it. Um, also, uh, I have a Facebook page, which is, uh, try my bits. Um, I have a website and there's a lot of really cool videos on there on how to properly measure a bit, which is important for me to know if you contact me, how to measure a horse's mouth and that's try my bits.com. Um, and people certainly can call and my number is three, five, two, seven, eight, nine, Eight nine eight four, and that is Eastern time zone. Time so time. you know, I need people to know that because I'll have people contact me from other places in the in the world, and they don't realize it may be nine o'clock there, but it's midnight here. Right. And <laughs> so um, you know, I just like I always say, well, what what time zone are you on, so that I I can call when it's really an appropriate time, or I can be contacted at a, an appropriate time. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Well, this has been so much fun. I know oh, like when we met before, like I think we were there for like a couple hours and we were just getting started. So yes. um, this is, I'm so excited. I think that you just thank you for oh, joining you're welcome. me and sharing the small glimpse behind the scenes of 
of what you do and you know your passion on this topic comes through and it's one of those things that you know if we're putting a bit in a horse's mouth and we're getting on our backs we need to know what the heck we're doing yep. and so for me i just feel it's like just part of the whole package we spend so much money on everything else yep. that you know getting balance in your horse or making a horse happy by spending you know a couple hundred bucks is well worth um, way more than having to buy two or three or four brand new saddles. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, or people will say, "Oh, I have a whole, I have a bag, I have a box, I have this or that, a drawer full of bits," and none of them work because they've been just, you know, tilting at windmills trying to figure it out, right? But not understanding what it is they're doing and and the factors that that, that all merge. Exactly. So. Exactly. Those those bits would be great if you wanted to make some designer pillows. And yeah. put a bit on it. Or toilet paper holders. That's or toilet. Right. Yes. There's lots of things to yeah, do. Yeah. There's plenty to do. Don't work. Work. <laughs> but you know, I like I said, I'm blessed to be able to do what I do. Yeah. And it was sort of my reward for having hung in there with that horse to to find something. Yeah. It was kind of the ray of sunshine as as it all ended up. But. Um, they're, they're always our best teachers, aren't they? Aren't absolutely, absolutely. Always our best teachers. It was my pleasure, Florence. Likewise. Thank you Thank so you. much. And um, everybody, if you've got any questions, please reach out to her. She is absolutely amazing. And we'll see you. Thank you, Thank you.